I, 24M, have grown up in the same neighborhood as Sarah, 24F, since we were kids. We went to the same schools together from kindergarten through high school graduation. I've had a crush on Sarah since I was 13 years old, but was always too shy to make a move. After high school, we went to different colleges in the same state. I got an engineering degree while Sarah got a degree in education. We didn't see each other much during college, but we still kept an occasional touch over social media. After graduating, we both moved back to our hometown for job opportunities. I got a job as an engineer at a tech company, and Sarah got a job teaching elementary school. Once we were back, we started hanging out more and more, almost like old times. Over the last year, my childhood crush on Sarah has reappeared and grown into love. We connect so well and love spending time together. I finally confessed my feelings to her a few months ago, and she feels the same way. The problem is that Sarah's parents have never approved of me. Even as kids, they thought I was a bad influence and prevented Sarah from hanging out with me. This always confused me because I never did anything wrong. Now that Sarah and I want to get married, her parents are angry. They think I'm below their daughter and will hold her back from success. I don't know what the problem is, I have a stable job as an engineer. Sarah has tried explaining our love to them, but they won't listen. Last week, I officially asked Sarah's dad for his blessing to marry his daughter. Not only did he say no, but he also threatened to disown Sarah if she marries me anyway. Sarah is devastated by her parents' disapproval. She wants to marry me but doesn't want to be cut off from her family either. I have told her I will support whatever choice she makes, but I am hopeful we can make this work. I am planning to have one more serious conversation with her parents to clear the air. I want to explain that I love Sarah more than anything, have a great job, and will do everything I can to make her happy. This marriage could be the best thing to ever happen to both of us. So Reddit, AITA for wanting to marry Sarah even though her parents hate me and forbid it? I know they just want what is best for their daughter, but I believe what is best for us is to be together. She is the love of my life and my best friend. I can't imagine spending my life with anyone else. I am hoping her parents will eventually come around, but if not, I think Sarah and I need to follow our hearts. So, what do you think Reddit? Should I back down and just remain friends with Sarah? Or should we move forward with marriage plans and hope her parents change their minds? Any advice would be appreciated. Update, I married Sarah against her parents' wishes, and now her dad has disowned her. When I last posted, Sarah and I were hopeful her parents might eventually come around to supporting our relationship and giving their blessing for us to marry. However, after another conversation with them, it became clear they remained completely opposed to us getting married. Sarah's dad directly told me I was not good enough for his daughter, and he would never let me become part of their family. Her mom also made it clear they would never support our union. Sarah was upset and didn't know what to do. She loved me and wanted to be with me, but was heartbroken her parents would reject her for choosing me. I hated seeing Sarah in so much pain. After a lot of long talks, considering the pros and cons, we decided together that we needed to follow our hearts. Sarah said as painful as it was, she could never imagine spending her life with anyone else but me. So, we made the difficult decision to move forward with getting married, even without her parents' blessing. We knew it might mean Sarah being disowned, but we hoped once we were husband and wife and could show the strength of our relationship, they might accept us over time. Planning the wedding was bittersweet. On one hand, we were thrilled to be marrying the loves of our lives. But it was also hard knowing Sarah's family would not be there to celebrate with us. Sarah has a large extended family with lots of cousins, aunts, uncles, etc. We debated whether to invite them, not knowing if they would even come without her parents' approval. In the end, we decided to invite them, hoping at least some would come against her parents' wishes. We decided to have a small, simple courthouse wedding with just our closest friends as witnesses. We didn't want anything flashy or expensive just an intimate ceremony focused on our love and commitment. The day arrived, and we were over the moon with excitement. All of our best friends were there, happy for us. We knew we had their love and support, even without her family. Just as we arrived, though, we spotted Sarah's parents and other relatives filing into the courthouse. My jaw dropped. I thought they were boycotting. Our wedding. However, it turned out Sarah's mom had convinced her dad to show up. 
She said refusing to come would ruin any chance of reunion with Sarah later. So he agreed, though he made it clear he was still opposed and would not participate. Her other relatives followed. Sarah broke down crying tears of joy to see them. We took it as a promising sign and hoped it meant there was a hope of acceptance. The wedding proceeded beautifully. At the reception, though, reality set in when Sarah's dad pulled her aside. He told her bluntly that she was no longer his daughter and not to come around their home again. Other relatives looked on awkwardly, not sure what to do. Sarah was heartbroken. I tried my best to comfort her through this heartbreak on our special day. Her mom even came to hug her and apologized, though said she had to stand by her husband's choice. It has now been a few weeks since Sarah was disowned. She is devastated to be cut off from her family, especially right after our wedding. I feel incredibly guilty that she is suffering this way. We are doing our best to focus on the positive, that we have each other now and are starting an amazing new life together. Our friends have become our surrogate family and offer great support. But Sarah's pain is still so fresh. She calls her parents every day, begging them to reconsider, but is met only with silence. My heart aches for my new wife, who should be enjoying newlywed bliss. I keep reassuring Sarah that this is temporary. Once her dad sees we are committed to each other and building a stable, happy life, he will realize what a mistake it was to abandon his only daughter. We must be patient and not give up hope that her family will come around. Someday, we will all be able to put aside our differences and reunite. At least, I pray that will be the outcome. For any others out there facing family disapproval of your relationship, our experience shows you must follow your heart. We are comforted knowing we have each other no matter what. We look ahead to the bright future we will build as husband and wife. I will provide another update soon on how things are going and if there has been any progress with Sarah's family. I appreciate all your kind words of support. It means the world to us both and gives us strength during this difficult time. Update 2. Sarah's dad hired a man to try and break up our marriage. It has been about six months since Sarah was disowned by her family for marrying me. It had been painful but we were finally starting to settle into our new normal and focus on building a happy life together. Sarah still greatly missed her family, but the grief was becoming more manageable, that is, until everything went haywire when a man from Sarah's past unexpectedly reappeared in her life. His name is Brandon, and he and Sarah dated briefly in high school before she ultimately friends on him. I always thought Brandon was sort of immoral and was glad when they broke up when I was in my senior year. One day when Sarah was coming back home after teaching from school, she met Brandon on the way. They both were surprised to meet each other after so long. Brandon asked her if she wanted to get dinner to catch up. She was surprised but agreed, thinking it would be nice to recall about old times. I didn't mind as I fully trusted her. When she got home that night after dinner though, she was clearly upset. I asked what had happened, and she hesitatingly told me that, over dinner, Brandon made it clear by the way he was talking that he was trying to follow her romantically. He kept commenting on how gorgeous she looked, asking if our marriage was happy and suggesting they get drinks sometime. I was very angry that this creep was unashamedly trying to get my wife to cheat on me. Sarah repeated she had zero interest and made it clear she was happily married. But the mystery of why Brandon was suddenly trying to woo her amused me. Things only got weirder from there. Brandon started popping up everywhere Sarah went. The grocery store, the gym, and even driving by our house. He always had some excuse for being there, but it was obvious he was stalking her. At first I thought those must be coincidences, but it became clear the guy was deliberately stalking her. Sarah also felt uneasy around him. Things came to a final limit when Brandon popped up in the lingerie section at the mall while Sarah was shopping and tried to make a pervy comment about her buying something special for me. Sarah felt embarrassed and asked him to wait for her as she completed her shopping. Brandon told her that he could help her find out the perfect match, just like old times. Sarah showed our marriage ring on her finger and smiled nervously. Brandon said that it was okay, and that her marriage will not stop him from complimenting her. He indirectly told her that he still found her beautiful and worthy. The question was, why was Brandon so obsessed with pursuing Sarah all of a sudden? She knew he always had a thing for her in high school, but why reappear now years later and follow her even after knowing that she was married? 
we couldn't figure out his motive. I considered asking Brandon directly and telling him to back the hell off before I got violent, but Sarah worried that could make him angry and provided the kind of immoral person he was, he may harm me. For now, we just focused on finding strong ways to keep him away. Maybe after some time passes, Brandon will get the message and move on. But something tells me his bizarre fixation on my wife runs deeper than an old high school crush. It is like someone put him up to this. This has also made Sarah miss her family even more, since she feels she has no parents to turn to for comfort and advice. As frustrating as that is, we keep reminding each other that we are in this together no matter what. I won't let this person, whoever put him up to it, or anyone else try to undermine what Sarah and I have built. We have tolerated so much to be together, and our love can withstand these challenges too. For now, we are just taking one day at a time, focusing on supporting each other and trying to move forward. I am hopeful Brandon will eventually fade back into the past where he belongs, but if not, my love for Sarah gives me strength I never knew I had. I won't let anyone intimidate us or disrupt the life we have dreamed of. Update. 3. Sarah caught her dad red-handed paying Brandon to break up our marriage. These last few months have been an absolute nightmare ever since my wife's high school ex. Brandon suddenly reappeared and began stalking and harassing her relentlessly. No matter how many times she rejected him, he kept popping up everywhere she went and trying to pursue her romantically. It's taken a huge toll on her mental health. She finally reached her breaking point and decided she needed answers. Her friends thought it was a terrible idea, but while I was at work, she drove over to Brandon's house determined to confront him face to face. She told all of this to me later when I got home. She walked up to his front door. Before she could even knock, she heard shouting coming from inside. She peered into the window and what she saw made surprised her. There was Brandon in his living room, arguing with her estranged father. She couldn't believe her eyes and had to blink a few times to make sure she wasn't hallucinating. What was her dad doing there with the man stalking his daughter? Sarah tried to listen to their yelling. I am done with this, Brandon. It was a mistake to get you involved, and now it has blown up in my face, her dad screamed. Brandon shot back angrily. After? Everything you promised me if I broke them up? I am not letting you off the hook, old man. Sarah gasped as she suddenly understood everything. Her dad had paid Brandon to pursue her and to try to end our marriage. Sarah felt sick. How could her own father betray her like this and use her vulnerable history with Brandon to manipulate her? Before she could even process this, their argument continued. Sarah's dad threw a wad of cash at Brandon and said, Here, take the rest of what I owe you and leave my daughter alone. Brandon snatched the money but said, I am telling her everything. That's when Sarah burst into the house and shouted, Too late, Dad, I already heard everything. How could you? Her dad's face went white. Brandon looked terrified and muttered, I am sorry, Sarah, your dad made me do it. Sarah screamed at them both, venting all the hurt and frustration over her dad's disapproval of our marriage. I also couldn't believe he would rather pay to have her stalked than accept who she loves. Sarah told him to stay out of our life forever. When Sarah told me all this, I was livid but said my priority was comforting me. Sarah's dad clearly has issues that he needs to resolve himself, but I won't let his toxicity infect my spirit anymore. Update 4. Brandon came to our house and tried blackmailing me with old photos. Just when Sarah thought things with Brandon couldn't get worse after discovering her dad hired him to stalk her, he managed to reach a horrific new low yesterday while I was at work. Sarah was home alone catching up on laundry when there was a continuous knocking on the front door. She looked out and saw Brandon standing there. How dare he come here after everything? Sarah yelled at him to leave immediately or she would call the cops but he said, Oh I don't think you want to do that Sarah, not until you see what I have to show you. He then held up a folder filled with old photos of her from high school. Sarah was completely confused and told him she didn't care about those silly old photos, but then he started describing specific images to jog her memory, and she felt genuinely scared. They were scandalous photos she had sent to Brandon years ago back when they were dating in school. At the time she was naive and thought she was just being fun and flirty, but now the idea of Brandon having those private images seemed very dangerous. Remember now? Brandon said with a twisted grin. 
I know you don't want dear old hubby or anyone else seeing these pictures of his precious wife, but they might just get leaked accidentally if you don't cooperate. Sarah was absolutely horrified and disgusted that Brandon would try to blackmail her with those photos. She made it clear that she would never do anything to cooperate with his sick scheme, but inside she was terrified. Brandon just laughed and said, Have it your way, Sarah, but I would check the internet if I were you. These photos have a way of spreading quickly online unless you agree to my demands, I will be in touch. He then blowed a kiss goodbye before walking away whistling. Sarah immediately slammed the door shut and started crying. She felt so violated and ashamed even though she had done nothing wrong. When I got home and saw the state she was in, I was very much worried. Sarah explained what had happened. She broke down apologizing for the photos, but I stopped her right away saying she had nothing to apologize for. I hugged her tight and said the only person in the wrong was Brandon for his disgusting behavior. I was calm and supportive, insisting those photos didn't change how I saw her. I made her feel safe again. We filed a police report about Brandon's blackmail scheme, but they said the photos themselves didn't amount to enough evidence of a crime. So over the next few days, Sarah and I vigilantly monitored the web to make sure Brandon didn't follow through on exposing those photos. To our relief, they didn't seem to pop up anywhere, but the threat still loomed that Brandon could leak them anytime if we didn't do something soon. As much as I hated letting him have that power, I couldn't bear the thought of Sarah's high school pics becoming public. Update number 5 I hatched a plan to get back Sarah's photos from that creep Brandon. After the trauma my wife Sarah went through when her toxic ex Brandon showed up demanding she cooperate with some sick scheme, or else he would leak scandalous photos from her past, I could hardly sleep. Sarah was filled with shame and anxiety that Brandon would follow through on exposing those pictures she sent him naively years ago. As much as I reassured her it didn't change how I see her. I knew the potential public humiliation terrified her. We contacted the police, and they said they couldn't do much without solid evidence that Brandon was blackmailing her. So even with a restraining order against him, the threatening photos remained in his possession. A constant source of distress for my poor wife. I felt helpless to protect Sarah from this person who was exploiting her worst insecurities. But then I realized I had to take matters into my own hands if the authorities wouldn't step in. I decided I would get those photos away from Brandon myself using any means necessary. I couldn't bear to see Sarah living in fear anymore. That bastard wasn't going to win this sick power game so I started devising a plan. My first thought was I could just beat Brandon until he gave me the pictures. But I realized violence could make things worse legally. I had to be smarter. After days of scheming, I came up with an idea that just might work. I was going to try framing Brandon by planting drugs in his car and calling the cops to bust him during a staged meetup. I hoped that with Brandon facing drug charges, the cops would have cause to search his home and discover the blackmail materials related to Sarah. Two birds, one stone. I decided to ask Trevor, a shady guy I went to high school with who now deals drugs, for some pills and powder to plant. I told him it was for a prank and gave him 300 bucks. Next I reached out to Brandon, pretending to be Sarah saying I changed my mind and wanted to meet him at the park to talk turns. As expected the pervert took the bait immediately. Right before the scheduled meetup I slipped the drugs under the driver's seat of Brandon's unlocked car, while it was parked outside his place. At the park I secretly trailed Brandon as he arrived first and waited for Sarah keeping a safe distance away. Right on time two cop cars I had tipped off came screeching into the lot. It was hard not to smile watching the cops discover the drugs in Brandon's car as I peeked from behind a tree. Brandon turned pale as a ghost when they cuffed him. I couldn't believe my plan was working. Shortly after Brandon was hauled back to the station, a forensic team arrived at his house with a warrant to comb for evidence related to the drug charges against him. I held my breath all that night waiting and praying they would find Sarah's photos. The next morning an officer called to tell us Brandon was going away to prison and that Sarah's personal materials would be returned to her shortly. When I gave her the news, the relief on Sarah's face brought me to tears. The nightmare was finally over. That evening after we burned every photo Sarah hugged me. This experience brought Sarah and I closer than ever knowing we will always protect each other.
As thankful as I am that her photos will stay private, the bigger reward is seeing my amazing wife feel safe and free again. Her beautiful spirit deserves to soar brightly with no shadows from the past holding her down.